So you've seen my top five, now here's the rest. So the next one's a shooter you probably haven't heard of. It's called Crossfire X. It's on the Xbox only and Xbox X. It's not on a PC or a PlayStation or anything like that. It's taken the modern battlefield type approach and has a modern art style and it shines on the smooth gameplay mechanics. It looks like any other free to play shooter to the naked eye, but I'm cheering myself on that I'll actually give this a shot and I'll find its place in the FPS market as nicely as it can. There's not much else to say here with Crossfire X, it's just, it looks really fancy, the graphics look really nice and shiny, and I've just been waiting to play it, so give it a shot, it's free. Alright, the next one is Saints Row, August 23rd. I loved the original Saints Row when I was a kid. It had so many features that no games have anymore, like robbing safes, eating food to change weight for your character, and more edgy gang tones to it. They seem to be wanting to go in their direction from Saints Row 3 with this one mixed with the originals. With it being over the top but more gang orientated like GTA 5, I'm looking forward to this one, let's hope they don't screw it up. The trailer gave me sort of Deadpool vibes which I really didn't expect from some of the characters, so definitely worth having a look. Ah yes, Shadow Warrior 3. Now this releases on the 2nd of March. Devolver Digital are taking the slice of pure edgy cake with this one. They were the people behind Hotline Miami. Um, and I love the vibes that Shadow Warrior gives. It was originally in the same era as Duke Nukem, but more of a smartass vibe than Chad, like Duke Nukem was back in the day. Shadow Warrior 3 has guns, swords, gore, and the same paced gameplay as Doom. This is going to be the one game I will not miss. Shadow Warrior 2 was full of customizations and different pickups that impacted your gameplay, so let's see where Shadow Warrior 3 takes us. Pick up Shadow Warrior 2 or even the original Redux versions, which are the remasters of the old school games back in the dust days. Uh, you can buy them on Steam. Yeah, pretty awesome. I'd recommend them. Alright, my post-apocalyptic Russian fans. Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl comes out on the 8th of December. The Stalker series is one I haven't actually touched yet, but I need to get into it ASAP. I've been looking at all these weird, freaky mods for the originals and it looks pretty sweet. If you've heard of the popular online survival shooter Escape from Tarkov, it's the original concepts of these games that were developed in the early PC days. They're finally releasing a sequel, Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl, and as you guessed by the title, it's set in a post-apocalyptic Chernobyl in Russia. The game's got Metro series vibes and I'm keen as for it. There's not much else to say other than check out that trailer, have a little look at it, it's very different. Alright, next up, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands comes out on March 25th. Now, I'm very excited about this. It looks like Borderlands and an open world RPG had a cell shaded baby. That's the art style for reference to my bad joke. Sorry, I'm full of them. It's got quests, monsters, dragons, and a colorful art style to go with it. Senseless fun humor as well. Most importantly, it has a ton of guns to shoot, as many random monsters as you can. It looks like to be a more in-depth than I thought as well, so I'm very, very keen to try this one out. That's all there is to say about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, but you can buy Assault on Dragon Keep, which is a standalone Borderlands 2 one. It's actually free on the PS5 store at the moment, I believe. So yeah, go download it, give it a shot. Well, there you have it. There's my games for this year. What are you gonna be playing? Damn.